from the global resources of ABC News with Terry Moran in Washington, Martin Bashir, and Cynthia McFadden in New York City. This is Nightline, October 26, 2007. Next, we have a shark tale for you. Those mean eyes, those jagged teeth, there's every reason to be afraid of sharks, right? Well, get this. Last year, there were only 62 unprovoked shark attacks in the world. You're more likely to be killed driving to the beach. So why is our fear of sharks so universal? Are we wrong? One man says yes. Sharks are painfully misunderstood. John Berman reports. Why is this man hugging a shark, a real shark, the kind of razor-toothed scoundrel of the sea that has inspired box office hits? <laughs> breathless headlines after the first shark attack death this Turns year. Turns into a scene right out of Jaws. Feeding frenzy. Feeding frenzy. For generations. But Rob Stewart, a 27-year-old Canadian nature photographer, doesn't think sharks are bad. He thinks they're beautiful. I think if you're in the water with sharks, you should be grateful for the opportunity to meet one. I think more people we can get underwater with sharks, the better. He's serious. He really likes them. And he's made it his life to get all of us, if not to like them, at least to understand them. Which is why he set out to make Shark Water. I figured if I made a movie that gave people the, you know, anti-jaws, then maybe they'd, you know, unite behind this animal like they unite behind elephants and pandas. I saw Jaws, I think, when I was five years old, and that pretty much ruined sharks for me forever. Jaws ruined sharks for virtually everybody, and it ruined the oceans. I mean, people swimming in lakes and rivers became afraid of what was underneath them. The Jaws music, I think, gives everybody shivers. <laughs> whether you're in the water or whether you're not, it brings it right back to you. You know, every summer on the news, including ABC, you know, we see shark attacks on beaches. We report them all over the country. They do happen. What people should realize is that shark attacks are mostly shark bites and shark mistakes. Sharks don't actually continue to eat the human being. If sharks were predators of people, people would be eaten every day in the ocean, and they're not. So they should be called man-chewers instead of man-eaters? They should be shark bites and shark mistakes instead of shark attacks. Despite my insolence, Rob has a point. Every year, there are just about 50 to 70 shark attacks, or shark mistakes, worldwide, and just four fatalities. In the U.S. alone, dogs kill an average of 24 people a year, and lightning strikes, 40. Still, why is it so important to improve the image of this bad guy of the big deep? For Rob, his moment of clarity came five years ago, when he was visiting the Galapagos Islands to take simple, pretty pictures of hammerhead sharks. That isn't what he found. Instead of finding hammerhead sharks, you know, in all their majesty underwater, I found 200 dead and dying sharks on 60 miles of illegally set long lines. And that made me realize that sharks were being wiped out even in the most protected areas on the planet. Why are so many people fishing for sharks? People are fishing for sharks because there's a huge demand for shark fins in Asia, for shark fin soup. Shark fin soup is a symbol of wealth. It serves as a sign of respect. It's become a ubiquitous dish at weddings, banquets, and business dinners. And because of that, a single pound of fin is worth $200 to $400. We know that the uh, fin is used to add only texture to the soup, not flavor. The flavor comes from chicken or pork broth and spices. So you can't even taste it? You can't taste it. It's just a texture. With the economic boom in China, there is booming demand for shark fins. More than 70 million. 70 million sharks are killed each year for their fins alone, with devastating consequences. Shark populations around the world have dropped 90% in the last 30 years. While he was filming on a conservation ship off the coast of Central America, Rob saw the hunt firsthand. We find a pirate fishing boat illegally finning for sharks. They were pulling sharks out of the water, cutting off their fins, and throwing the rest of the body back into the ocean, which was illegal. 
And that started this day-long battle between the conservation ship and the pirate fishing boat. That resulted in the two boats colliding. Shark finning is illegal in many countries, including the U.S., but it was Rob's ship that was blamed for this encounter and detained by Costa Rican authorities. Why? Rob blames the political clout of what he calls the shark fin mafia, the huge black market trade around the world estimated by some to be in the billions of dollars. In Costa Rica, Rob saw the scope of the problem when he ventured from his detained ship to a secluded dock. And as soon as I got on the roof, as far as the eye could see, there were tens of thousands of shark fins all drying on the roofs. What are you thinking when you're looking at all these shark fins? Millions of dollars. There's millions of dollars in shark fins. And uh, when we got on the roof of this truck and started filming these operations, it was really clear that what we were onto was something illegal and something that the government was totally ignoring. It got worse. Rob and his companions were convinced they would not be treated fairly by Costa Rican authorities. They pulled up anchor and made for international waters. To get away from Costa Rica, we had to wrap our boat with barbed wire so the Coast Guard couldn't jump on board. And they were, you know, running along next to us with machine guns telling us they're going to shoot us unless we stop running. One of the scariest things about filming shark water was not the sharks, it was the people. What's more, during the five years of filming, Rob suffered from tuberculosis, West Nile virus, dengue fever, and flesh-eating disease. I mean, people might say you're a little bit crazy putting your life on the line for sharks. Sharks are really important. What people don't know is that they've been at the top of ocean food chains for 400 million years, and that oceans, life in the oceans, gives us 70% of the oxygen we breathe and absorbs, you know, 70% of the carbon dioxide or the global warming gas that we put into the atmosphere. So by removing sharks, we're sort of cutting off the head of the most important ecosystem for our own survival. So people may think I'm crazy trying to save sharks, but the reality is they're one of the most important animals we need to be saving. The very predator that scares so many is the one that needs saving. With so much manic mythology, Rob knows it's a hard sell. The only people that are afraid of sharks are people that have never actually met one. And if you go diving with sharks, you'll see for yourself that they're not out there to get us. I haven't met one, but I'm still scared. I mean, you should try it. It'll change everything for you. Yes, even for those of us who might never want to meet a shark, at least we can see why Rob Stewart finds them magnificent. I'm John Berman for Nightline in New York. Mm. Rob Stewart captured some incredible underwater images on his journeys traveling for the film. You can see a sample of them on our website, nightline.abcnews.com. The documentary Shark Water arrives in theaters next Friday.